probably one of the most dreaded uh, fish diseases is uh, hole in the head disease or head and lateral line erosion, H-L-L-E. And it's a disease that uh, seems to appear or is more often found in fish like Oscars and, and discus, interestingly enough. But it's, uh, I've, I've never seen it even discussed in, uh, in African, uh, African cichlid, cichlid circles. It never seems to really come up as an issue. But I have a few fish in, in the tank behind me here in this 90 gallon that are starting to show some of the uh, HLLE signs. And um, it, it's, if, if you go back to older videos, uh, you can see the very early, early signs of it uh, quite a while ago, actually, uh, in the form of very small pits, almost uh, uh, unnoticeable and uh, little pits on the head that could be just dismissed as well, scraped up against something or, or something like that. But as the, as the pits uh, become more pronounced, uh, it becomes more and more obvious that it, it's a, um, a slow-moving form of HLLE, as you can see with the fish. I'm calling it a, a bit of a rabbit hole because if you go, if, if you start looking into it, if you start looking into hole in the head, uh, you're, you're going to run into a lot of uh, inconclusive information. There was actually a, a scientific study in, in 2016 that concluded that they had no conclusion. You know, the, the conclusion was that there was no definitive thing that they could point to and say, this is why uh, you know, fish, fish get it. And instead, uh, there was just a variety of factors, just a variety of factors, which, which, which could include, and I, I've written some of them down, uh, stress, infection, activated carbon. You believe that? Uh, the theory being that activated carbon is removing too much of the good stuff. Some of the good minerals and things that should be in the water are being removed by activated car carbon. Who knew, right? Uh, water factors, water parameters, that makes sense, right? Malnutrition, in other words, are you providing your fish with the, with the uh, kind of nutrition they need? Uh, a lack of ultraviolet light. I mean, I know ultraviolet light uh, can be good at controlling viruses, uh, killing uh, perhaps certain kinds of bacteria. Uh, very few people have ultraviolet light, uh, you know, or use ultraviolet light or have their aquarium in a window where you can get ultraviolet light ambiently. And uh, even, even straight electrical current, like having uh, some piece of equipment that is shorting and, uh, and, you know, and, and causing an, a current, even that's a theory. But none of these are conclusive as the cause of, uh, of the HLLE, which, which makes it a little bit hard to treat. One thing everybody agrees, agrees on is that water parameters has, have to be right. And that doesn't mean that you have clean looking water. Clean looking water can be actually very toxic. Uh, it, it has to, and it, and it doesn't mean that your ammonia and nitrite should be at zero, which of course it should be. And if it isn't, you've got some problems, but uh, it, it, is, is the water the right pH for the fish that you're keeping? Does it have the right amount of, of you know, calcium and magnesium? And, you know, is it, is it, Really, is the water hardness what it should be for that particular species? These are all factors that have to be taken into consideration. I've checked those factors. Those factors have been checked with this aquarium, and and, and it seems okay. It's within range uh, of what uh, of what these fish, the geo, the geo Asurimanensis uh, and the AC Hecali. We're good. We're good in those areas. Uh, temperature, uh, temperature is right. You know, this aquarium stays between. 79 and 80 degrees uh, so the water needs to be uh, spot on everyone seems to agree on that everyone also seems to agree that stress stress is a factor now certainly having your water parameters off that could be a source of stress but 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 in the area of stress what they're referring to more specifically is uh, tank mates that are harassing, uh, you know, let's say you have a, a tank where there's constant battles, chasing, fin damage, nipping, uh, things like that. 
uh, that would be a, a high stress environment. And one thing that I've noticed over the years with all diseases is, uh, is that there has to be a predisposition, the circumstances of a predisposition before you get the, the, the bringing about or the precipitation, before you get the actual uh, disease, there have to be the circumstances have to be in place to, to set you up. Some people think that this, uh, the hexameatisis, hexameatisis, it's a type of parasite. And, and one of the, and they think it might be related to the, to the HLLE, but, but the, the comment that you'll find is that that parasite is probably in every tank and, and, and probably on every fish, but it's only the fish that is under uh, stress, either a momentary shock of some kind, you, know, you put freezing water into your tank or something, or a constant day in and day out stress. Uh, that fish, their immune system becomes compromised and that parasite can now bore the holes. At the same time, I've seen people uh, take a scraping, actually a sample of the actual hole in hole, hole in the head disease, and they don't find any of the uh, hexameatiasis. <laughs> they don't find that parasite. They don't see it in the slide. And, and so another theory is that once the hole gets formed, bacteria gets into that hole and, 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 and keeps it aggravated and, in, and, and over time expands the hole. So some people talk about using salt, and I know salt will, will stimulate your, the slime coat, but if you have a bacteria in the hole, is that bacteria you know, in a hole that doesn't develop slime, slime coat necessarily, right? Because it's broken through the outer layer of the fish. So is that, is that salt really going to be effective? So again, a lot of this is, is speculation. And another thing that you see people agree on is as a last resort, use something like a, a Metro or some type of an antibiotic uh, to go ahead and, and, and remove the bacteria, get the bacteria under control, that, and then use clean water, right? And as you can see here, I've, I've done some very large water changes, much larger than I've ever done on this tank before. So I did some very large water changes and uh, was, uh, you know, very careful in matching temperature. And I didn't want to, you know, I filled it up, you know, kind of slowly to make sure I didn't get a pH shock of some kind. I've just never done 90% water changes on a tank like this. But I did a couple of them. And as you can see here, I, I haven't seen like an immediate rebound. So I may have to go to, to the final phase of this, which is to uh, hit it with some antibiotics. And I know that uh, things like, like Fritz, uh, Paracleanse, they have the, you know, they have the right kind of antibiotic uh, for the bacteria and parasites associated with HLLE. So that might be what I end up doing. Now, do I take those fish? I mean, as you can see, they're, they're a decent sized fish. Do I move them to a 29 gallon tank, which is what's usually recommended, move your fish to a smaller tank for treatment. And that way you're not bombing your main tank with antibiotics, which will impact the, uh, could possibly, I haven't run into it as a problem, but could possibly impact the, uh, the beneficial bacteria in the tank. So if I move them into a 29 gallon for treatment, is that going to create a new level of stress? And if that stress is, is because they chase each other around, is that going to be even worse if they're confined to a 29 gallon for a two week regimen of antibiotics? The good news, the good news is that uh, it is moving slow. That might be, I mean, I do keep my tanks very clean. Maybe that's because it's relatively clean water and within the right parameters. So the hole in the head hasn't become one of those big uh, 
giant dramatic cases that you see sometimes. So what do you think? You think I should bomb the entire tank? I mean, treating a 90 gallon tank, that's nine packets of, uh, of paracleanse per treatment for about a week, right? With a water change at the end and possibly repeating. So 18 packets or putting them into a 29 where I'm using three packets per treatment. It's, it's on the one hand, it would be more economical. On the other hand, am I going to be creating new stress? Then, of course, it's recommended that after you, you treat with an antibiotic, you, you use activated you know, charcoal, right? You use carbon in tanks that have been treated to remove residual meds from the aquarium. So is that going to put you on a, on a merry-go-round where now you're, again, removing vital components of your water, certain trace minerals, are being absorbed by the carbon and now you're predisposing your fish uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to, to hold the head. So it's a, it's an interesting one. I'm going to uh, give them very fresh water. I'm going to service the filters, you know, on separate days. I'm not going to shock them and uh, make sure that they're getting a, a varied diet. So there is some, some vegetables, and, you know, in the diet, which I do, I provide them with some greens and, uh, and just see if I can nurture them back because it isn't really growing quickly. It's not moving fast and they're acting, you know, they're acting well, right? They have good color, um, you know, good fins and, uh, uh, you know, behaving right, eating with good appetite. So I'm going to try and nurture them back. And if, if that doesn't work, I'll go to I'll go to the next phase, which is hitting it, hitting it, hitting it with the antibiotic. Now, my question to you: Do you have experience with uh, with with head and lateral line erosion? Now, it's called that, of course, because it the the holes appear in the head, but they'll also follow the lateral line along the body of the fish, and uh, and if it gets real bad they lose their ability to really uh, navigate and move around. And uh, it, it just becomes a very, very bad scene. Um, I've seen photographs uh, that, uh, that were just disgusting. I'm not even going to share with you of how bad the disease can get. This is um, a minor, a very minor example of it, but uh, that's not a reason to not treat it. So if you've had experience with it, uh, let me know. But let me know what, 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 what's been your experience. What did you do with it? I know uh, one of the fans of the channel, Whip, um, a subscriber, uh, he, he mentioned he was able to take care of it with big water changes with an Oscar. And he sent me some pictures, and it looked like the Oscar recovered. So uh, that, that, uh, I, I want to hear what you have to say. What's been your experience? Have you had it occur with uh, geos and AC Hecalis uh, as opposed to discus or Oscars? Uh, and what what did you do and uh, and did it work share in the comments below and we'll talk about this and a whole lot more on Saturday at the uh, cichlids and coffee live stream and that's every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central that's uh, noon Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific great group of fish keepers get together for an hour and we talk about a whole bunch of stuff from disease to food to filters you name it and uh, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, consider uh, subscribing, hitting that bell, hitting the thumbs up. And uh, if you want to take it a step further, consider becoming a Garage Gang member, a, a, uh, a Patreon supporter. It's a way to support the channel on a monthly basis. Uh, it starts for as little as $3 a month. All right. So thank you, my friends. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you again soon. Wish me luck.